<sighs> so this is my fifth attempt at doing this video. Uh, first time I did it, wasn't particularly happy with it, so reshot it. Second time, was happy with it, but then introduced the t-shirt and the green screen, so redid it again. Then before I could finish that, I scrapped the green screen, so shot it again last week. Except after shooting that one, I got my hair cut and then went to edit it and realised that I'd missed an important piece out, so couldn't exactly fill in the gaps. So, fifth time lucky. Now, in this video, I want to try and start to answer a question that I get asked quite a lot. It doesn't matter whether I'm at a wedding or a commercial shoot, somewhere that I'm paid to be, or if I'm just casually out and about taking photographs. If I'm carrying around a camera like this, then inherently people start to notice you and come over and chat. They could be other photographers, they could just be members of the general public, but you'll get people come over, want to talk to you about photography, see the pictures you're taking, stuff like that, and that's nice. I love that. I love engaging with other people, trying to inspire them to take up photography themselves or improve their photography. But at some point, somebody will always ask the same question. What camera should I buy? Obviously, it makes sense to get advice about photography equipment from a photographer. But the problem with just going up to a photographer and saying, oh, you're a photographer, what camera should I buy? Is it's like going up to anybody who knows how to drive and saying, oh, you know how to drive, what car should I buy? It entirely depends on your situation. And ultimately, it comes down to the same three key points. What do you want it for? How much do you want to spend? And it's your personal preference. So with this video, I want to break down the four categories that cameras fall under. Compact, bridge, mirrorless, and DSLR. And talk about the general advantages and disadvantages of all of these categories. So that hopefully by the end of this video, if you are in the market for a camera, you're going to have a better idea as to what sort of camera category you're going to be looking for. From there... It is really a matter of go to a shop or somewhere where you can get the cameras in your hands and have a play around with them and see which feels more comfortable to you. Because at the end of the day, that is the most important aspect of picking a camera. You can forget technical specifications. If you don't get a camera that you are comfortable and happy to use, then you're not going to want to use it. And it's just going to be a waste of space. Far better to get a camera system that you're happy with because you're not going to have any hesitations in grabbing your camera, getting outside and going taking some photographs. So let's delve straight in and look at compact. So there's absolutely no prizes for guessing what the key selling points of these cameras are. They are compact. They generally look something like this. They're very small, they are very lightweight, convenient cameras that usually have the added benefit that when the camera's powered down, the lens will retract right the way into the body. So when you are not using the camera, they take up absolutely minimal space. So they're the most convenient camera body to carry around. But they do have some drawbacks. Firstly, with the lens. In order to keep the size of the camera to a minimum, the lens has to be kept to a minimum size as well, which means they generally have a very restrictive zoom range, normally a five to 10 times optical zoom at most, and they also have a very restrictive aperture, so they don't let in a lot of light. So for casual day-to-day -day photographs, a compact camera might be suitable for you, but if you are looking at photographing either things that are potentially quite far away, then you might not have that zoom range that you need. Or if you're photographing a lot in low light situations, you might find the aperture doesn't let enough light in for you to get a good photograph. Also, there's the sensor. Particularly in budget level compact cameras, they generally have quite a small sensor. Probably not much bigger than you would find in your phone. So while cheap compact cameras will give you the benefit of a zoom range that a phone doesn't, their image quality and their low light performance from the sensor generally isn't that good. Higher end compact cameras do get bigger sensors that offer you better low light performance and generally better image quality, but they also come at a higher price. So compact cameras are really aimed for the kind of casual shooter wanting to take day-to-day -day photographs, maybe share them up to social media or something, but aren't looking for the professional grade results. Next, let's look at bridge cameras. So the bridge camera was brought about to bridge the gap between compacts 
and DSLRs. So compact cameras, very small, very lightweight cameras, but a very restrictive zoom range. DSLRs offer you the flexibility of fitting longer telephoto lenses to be able to shoot far away objects, but the systems are generally a lot bigger. So a bridge camera gives you a smaller lightweight body like you would find from a compact, but has a much bigger lens like you would find on a DSLR. As a result, rather than a compact camera having a five to 10 times optical zoom, bridge cameras are pushing 50, 60 plus times optical, which means that it gives you a huge versatility to be able to photograph anything from a wide angle landscape all the way through to an animal far away in the distance. But bridge cameras suffer from the same sort of pitfalls as the compact cameras. Namely, in order to keep the size of the camera and the lens down to a minimum, the aperture of the lens isn't particularly fantastic. Also, the lens is still incorporated into the body, so you can't change the lens over for a wider aperture lens. But also, the longer that you make a zoom range on a lens, the more complicated the design is to come up with. So image quality generally tends to be hindered as well. And bridge cameras also have the same sort of sensor setup as a compact camera. Namely, budget level ones have the very small sensors, the higher end ones do have the bigger sensors, but they come at a bigger price and a bigger size. So much like compact cameras, for the kind of casual photographer not looking for professional grade results, compact bridge cameras might be an option for you. But what if you want to push your creative boundaries? What if you do want a changeable lens system? Well, you could look at mirrorless. So a mirrorless camera is basically a DSLR, but with the mirror inside removed, hence the name. As a result of removing the mirror, the whole body can be made a lot smaller and a lot lighter, which makes for a much more convenient camera to carry around. So you have a small, lightweight, convenient body with basically the sensor from a DSLR. So you get DSLR levels of image quality and noise performance, which makes these the perfect camera. Not necessarily. While there is no doubt that mirrorless cameras are getting better and better as technology advances, and generally they are smaller and lighter than a DSLR, mirrorless has two big pitfalls, both of them caused by removing that mirror. Now the mirror in the DSLR serves two key purposes. Firstly, it reflects the light up into the viewfinder. So when you look through the viewfinder of a DSLR, you are actually seeing straight through the lens itself. The mirror also reflects some of the light onto an AF chip. This is how a DSLR autofocuses and it is a very quick and a very responsive system. So even the most budget levels of DSLR have very quick autofocus compared to other cameras. But by removing the mirror in a mirrorless camera, we don't have those facilities. As a result, a mirrorless camera has to rely on using the sensor itself. So to replace the optical viewfinder, a mirrorless camera will either show you the image on the back of the screen or will have an electronic viewfinder on top. This basically just displays whatever the sensor can see as an image on the screen. But as a result, it means that the sensor has to be active the whole time the camera is on. But with the DSLR, the sensor is only needed when the picture is actually being taken. So as a result, the rest of the time, the sensor is basically in a very low power state. But with a mirrorless camera, not only is the sensor always active, but then you have to power a second screen the whole time as well. So generally, the battery life of a mirrorless camera is not as good as an equivalent DSLR. Then mirrorless cameras have to rely on the sensor to autofocus as well. And again, technology is improving and the autofocus in mirrorless cameras is getting better and better. But in the more budget level mirrorless cameras, generally the autofocus is not going to be quite as quick and as responsive as the budget level DSLRs. So mirrorless cameras offer you great image quality in a very small, lightweight body. But what if you want something more for sports or wildlife? What about DSLRs? DSLRs have been the workhorse of photographers for decades. And as I've already said, there is no doubt that mirrorless cameras are getting better and better and better. But DSLRs do still have their place. And you can probably work out most of the pros and cons of DSLRs based off the other camera systems anyway. But just to clarify, 
DSLRs give you the same great image quality that you would find in most mirrorless cameras. They also have excellent autofocus, even from a budget level camera. So if you're after photographing a lot of sports and wildlife fast paced things, DSLRs are generally the best option for you. Then there's the battery life. Because a DSLR can power the sensor down for a lot of the time the camera is on, then unlike all the other systems, it has generally a much better battery life. There are a couple of preferences to consider between DSLR and mirrorless. So, for example, the viewfinder. Some photographers prefer an optical viewfinder over an electronic, whereas other photographers prefer the electronic over the optical. You really have to try them and see. Then there's the size and weight. Mirrorless camera bodies are generally smaller and lighter than equivalent DSLRs, which might suit travel photographers, wedding photographers, or the likes who want as small a lightweight kit as possible. But for sports and wildlife photographers who are maybe using the bigger, heavier lenses, they prefer having the bigger sized body to balance things out, which brings us full circle back to the beginning point, which is your personal preference. So hopefully now you've got an idea as to which sort of camera system is best going to suit what you need. Are you after an all-in-one general purpose camera like a compact or a bridge camera that you can just take with you wherever to just snap your life away? Or are you after a more specialized kit where you can swap and change the lenses to suit what you need, such as wide angle, telephoto or macro, in which case look towards either mirrorless or DSLR. Once you've got a specific category nailed down, go out, get hold of the different cameras, have a play around with them, and see which you prefer the feel of. Then get the camera, go out, and enjoy photography. As always, guys, if you have any questions, comment boxes down below. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video.